Ladies and gentlemen, members of Congress, my fellow Americans, at the very beginning of my presidency, in the shadow of that terrible, fateful night, I spoke to you, and I promised absolute transparency, absolute truth. I betrayed that pledge in an effort to protect an ongoing investigation by the FBI and the Secret Service. But tonight, I speak to you with a lightened heart, because I can finally tell you the truth about what really happened to us. A recent article written by one of our nation's most respected journalists was correct. Al Sakar did not attack our capital, even though at the time, overwhelming evidence suggested just that. We can tell you now with absolute certainty that this horrific act was carried out by a domestic terror group led by a man named Patrick Lloyd. Lloyd and his followers believed that American greatness was in its decline and that somehow we were no longer heirs to the generations that pushed back the tide of fascism, put men on the moon, and relegated the Berlin Wall to the pages of history. In short, these people believed that our best days were behind us and that they themselves knew better how to remake our country. They were wrong. In every possible way. They debased the American dream and disrespected the incredible sacrifices made by so many to build and sustain our nation. And even though the fabric of America may have been frayed by their violence and hatred, I stand here rejoicing in the fact that it was never torn. In a time of unprecedented fear, we did not abandon one another nor did we abandon our ideals, our sense of community, our commonalities. From the first responders who answered the call, racing into the flames when tragedy struck, to the men and women who fulfilled their civic duties by casting their ballots even under the threat of attack, our better angels have shined through. Now, I know that there are times when our country appears to be divided, but I have seen the one thing that will bind us together forever, Love, love of country, love of hope, love of dreams, love of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I am a husband, I am a father, and I am a son of this nation. And never before have I been more proud, more optimistic. And I do not need you to tell me that you feel the same way too, because I can see it in your eyes and hear it in your hearts. As St. Paul admonished us, let us not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. You see, America is not just simply a country, nor is it the sum of its 50 states. It's an idea. A bold and righteous idea, a guiding light that can never be extinguished. So let us say to the rest of the world, we welcome your friendship and extend an open hand to anyone who wants to make lives freer and better. To oppose us, I can only simply warn you, your days are numbered, for our time has come. I say again, our time has come. And to the American people, let me say that it has been the privilege of my lifetime to serve you, and I promise to continue serving until I am asked of service no more. Thank you for the honor. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America.